Good morning grade sevens and welcome to my morning run around my house. Um, it doesn't get me very far and I have to do quite a few laps to get any sort of real distance going but it keeps me busy and I hope that you've been busy throughout this period as well. So today we're doing science and you might wonder what this run has to do with anything scientific. Well I will show you shortly and it's the best part of my morning run. I'll see you soon. Cheers. So to answer a few questions that you might have is did I really run two and a half kilometers and the answer is yes and I'm gonna put the proof up here hopefully. Do I really sweat this much? No I don't. Um, it started raining while I was doing this. Uh, can you hatch Pokemon Go eggs while you're running? The answer is not really really well. And then what is the point of this for science? Well, this is where the fun is going to start. So I'm going to put my phone down. And here we go. This is the reward for running two and a half kilometers. Yeah. Oh. Do you ever come out of a swimming pool? And like me right now, your eyes are burning and the first thing you do is go mom dad there's way too much chlorine in the swimming pool well my boys do that all the time in fact just yesterday they were complaining about it and other symptoms maybe your eyes are burning your skin goes dry or those of you who have really blonde hair you can't get out of the pool and the next day your hair has gone green well that's actually got nothing to do with chlorine itself if you look at my pool it's sparkling clean but it's really rough on the eyes and the reason for that is something called a pH level. Now a pH level is made up of three words. One, acid. Number two, base. Number three, neutral. And what we want from an ideal swimming pool is a neutral number. And that neutral number happens to be seven. Now my pool is either too acidic or there's too much base in it. And right now I don't know which is which. And I'd have to test that out. But I'm not going to because I don't have a testing kit. And even if I did, I wouldn't be able to go to the shops to buy the stuff to fix it. So today's lesson is what exactly is a base and what exactly is an acid and what does it mean when something is neutral? I'm going to go have a swim and when I get back, we'll deal with those issues. Cheers. So what makes an acid an acid and a base a base? Well, it's actually got to do with atoms and electrons and in particular an hydrogen atom that does not have an electron or that it's lost this electron and that is called an hydrogen ion. Now if you think your brain is full after hearing all of that, don't worry, we are going to keep things simple. And our simple test to see if something is an acid or is a base is called the taste and touch test. So the taste test works like this. If you think that something tastes sour, then it's going to be an acid. And if you think that something tastes bitter, then it's going to be a base. And the touch test works like this. If something is sticky, it is going to be an acid. And if something is smooth to the touch, it is going to be a base. And I thought I'd pull in my son, Hayden, who is in grade two, to help us out with this one. So this is my son, Hayden, and he's in grade two. And he's volunteered to help me with the science experiment. So what I've done is I've given him a secret liquid to drink. He doesn't know what it is yet. Do you know what it is, Hayden? No. No. So he's going to trust me. We're going to look at his face and we're going to see whether this liquid is sour or if it is bitter. And we're also going to see if it is sticky or smooth to the touch. So Hayden, you ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to look at his facial expressions. On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> Hayden, is that sour or is that bitter? Sour. It is sour. And can you touch it quickly and tell me if it is sticky or, or smooth? Sticky. Is it very sticky? Yes. Do you know what you drank? Yes, lemon juice. Lemon juice. So, Hayden, do you think that lemon juice is an acid or a base? Acid. Are you sure? Yes. Fantastic. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go into your kitchen, into your fridge, into your cupboards and find as many of the things listed on the PDF that I sent to you earlier today. You, if you don't have anything, it's no problem. Please don't go off to the shops to buy it. Just make do with what you have. 
I'm gonna see what I have. I know I don't have everything, but let's go on a little trip throughout my fridge and cupboards and kitchen and maybe house because we might have to get more of these. Tomato sauce, check. More lemons, check. Some rosemary, check. Some vinegar, some tea, and a carbonate of soda. That will work well. And I forgot, some water. And that's it. Those are the only ingredients that I could find in my house. And if you can't find all your ingredients, please don't worry about it. There is one ingredient though that is going to give you some interesting results and that is mustard. Now I'm not a great fan of mustard so I don't have mustard in the house but if you do and you've got a large family please do the taste and touch test with everybody in the family and see what your results are like. I think you'll find them quite interesting. Let me know, pop me an email. So to conclude I have three questions for you. Is the taste and touch test a perfect way of figuring out whether something is an acid or a base. I'd like you to think about that carefully because I'm sure there's some things in your garage or maybe your kitchen cupboard that you wouldn't want to touch or you wouldn't want to taste. And why wouldn't you want to touch it? And why wouldn't you want to taste it? Think about that. Secondly, water. What is water? Water wasn't bitter, it wasn't sour, it wasn't sticky, it wasn't slippery to the touch. What does that make water? Think about it and let me know. And finally, a little bit of fun. What happens if you take a base, a base like bicarbonate of soda, and you mix it with a acid like vinegar? I'm sure you've seen this experiment before and I'm going to do it to conclude, but what happens when you mix the two? Do some research, let me know, and let me know whether this new liquid that we're going to create is an acid, is it a base, is it a neutral, is it on its way to being neutral? Is it on its way to being an acid or a base? Who knows? Let me know in the comments. Have a good one. We'll see you next week for science.